Good morning, folks. It is 3.35 a.m. I plan on being on the road in about 10 minutes. I got a two-hour and 40-minute drive down to Paris, Tennessee to start practice for the BFL number five in the LBL division and uh, eating the breakfast of champions. Chicken oatmeal. Sounds gross, but keeps you going. You got cinnamon, blueberries, bananas, oatmeal, walnuts, and a couple other special ingredients. A little bit of Greek yogurt, a little bit of maple syrup. Anyway, uh, I'm going to jump in the boat with Keith Amerson. So uh, I'll see you on the water. What's up folks? We made it to the lake. Two hours and 40 minutes and I stayed awake. Uh, a little bit of fog, but we got a beautiful morning down there at Paris Landing State Park. Gonna fish with Keith over here. You had a good tournament last year, didn't you? Finished uh, second. That's right. That's Lost right. the winning fish twice. Is that right? Lost by eight ounces and just needed one keeper. Jesus, man, that happens, man. That's why they call it fishing and not catching it or whatever they say. more than it should for some reason. <laughs> What's the plan this morning? Uh, I'm looking for a topwater bite. Okay. And I'm going to at least till 10 o'clock. That's all I'm going to do is try to find a topwater bite somewhere. Okay. After that, I'm just going fishing. Well, I'll just follow you around. How's that? That's fine. <laughs> all right, we're going to dump this boat in. we got quite a few people out here practicing. Um, kind of looks like he had some rain maybe overnight. Everything's kind of wet. Mm. It's going to be uh, looks like partly cloudy this morning, but the sun is going to peak out here soon. So see you out here in the water. Gotta start somewhere. You can catch big fish on eight pound tests. You just gotta, well, you gotta be easy with them, you know? He, he didn't do anything wrong. He was, he was placing right. I mean, he had his drag loose and everything. Yeah. He could've sawed it off with his teeth or he had a little nick in his line or. That's what we both think. That's another bite. That felt more like a white bass. It's kind of a tap, 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 tap. I think those are white bass a lot of times. Sometimes those those real those eight or ten inch smallmouth, that's what they'll do too. They'll just tap tap. They never will really eat it for some reason. Hey, we caught one. Second bite I've had. There you go. Well, they're healthy though. Built good. Is there a ta tackle shop in Paris or around this area? ACS Marine up there, they have some. That's where I'm going to go. What about Walmart? Or Academy or something like that? Another little one. 
better than the last one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Getting bigger, yeah, they, they look good. Man, you get out of that shell and you're just out of that shell, just instantly. Largy. Well, Menendez was saying that he thinks there's gonna be some eel grass in here sometime in the next couple years. That'll, that'll change everything for the better. That ain't a little one. There's old small jaw. That's one I need tomorrow. Big one? Yeah, good one. Three pounder probably. That sucker just lit up like a freight train. Maybe not three pounder. Yeah. Yeah, cause he he just do do, and then my my bait just disappeared, just like that last one. That's the third bite I've had. That's a good one. Good quality fish. Take five of those for sure. Yeah, probably will. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, fish is built good. Here we go, folks. A little small jaw action. Just on that uh, jewel shaky head and just a rage crawl. It's a nice fish. Good solid fish. Need. I'd be happy with two of those tomorrow, to be quite honest with you. I think two will get me into the, the second day. Here we go. Let's let this guy go. Yeah, I mean, the wind's blowing in here perfect, you know? You gone. Better one? I don't think it's a bass. Oh. Drum. I've been, I got, I got like four bites on this cast. That's a good one. Oh, Magnum. He's hooked outside the mouth. Some ugly fish. All right, folks, a little mid-morning report. Kind of show you what we're fishing here. Um, we're on the Tennessee River, and a popular thing in the fall and really any time of the year is uh, just fishing kind of bars. And that's what we're doing. You know, no secret here. It's uh, just a high percentage area and just bouncing around fishing main river bars. You can kind of see right here where the boat's at. Um, this right here is just basically a hump. And move on down here. We just came from right here. So here's a little island and there's just these little little high spots out here along the, the river channel and fish will pull up. These All these bars have shells, shells on them. So they're really hard. And it's just, a, it's just a great place for shad to get up there and feed and the fish find them. Um, we're, we're having a few bites. You know, I caught one good one earlier. He just caught a magnum drum. But we're actually, we're getting a lot of, a lot of little pecks and little bites. Um, but they seem to be just kind of short striking, not quite committing to it. Um, I just had a fish pull both of the pinchers off of my crawl. Um, but it's just a matter of moving around and... You know, you'll get a few bites on some, something, some of them, there's nothing going on. You just keep moving and covering water and that's, that's fall fishing, keeping your head down and bouncing around. Water temps are, we got 78.5 right now. And the lake level is, I think it's like 354 to 355. So that's right at winter pool. 
they pull it down a little bit early around here um, and the visibility is typical Kentucky Lake stain you know I'd say probably what would you say like two foot of visibility maybe probably. yeah somewhere around two foot of visibility it's got that kind of green tint to it so it's definitely not clear of course we're on the the west side if you get over there on the east side it typically um, it's a little clearer over on that side we haven't made it over that way yet to, to let you know for sure if it is clear but most of the time it's a lot more stained on the west side than it is on the east side what pound liter do you have on there huh? what pound liter do you have 15 pound big game I think it was a Strand, a Toyota, whatever they called it back then. I called a small mouth and bringing it to the boat during practice. And there, was, there was a school of them as big as your freaking car hood coming with it. Huh. And they ain't caught a small mouth there since. They was, they was just passing through. Huh? They was just passing through. Huh? Some tough line. I don't know. I don't know if it's a Sunline or if it's Seagar, one or the other. Man, it got tough out here. Um, we haven't had a legitimate bite in quite a while. We just keep bouncing around trying different areas. Keith's theory is the full moon's got them all messed up in the middle of the day, and I'll have to agree based on what we're seeing out here. But we're not giving up. We just keep popping around. Maybe we'll get lucky before we have to put this boat on the trailer. Oh, jumper. That's why. That's, that's close. Ooh, it's a good one. Well, he's been biting on it for foot out of line. He just that's a good one. Need that one tomorrow. Woo! He's a little bigger than I thought. Yeah. Watch this. Solid fish. Went to snatch him up in there. Nothing wrong with that. Please come see me tomorrow. It's a good one. Good work. That's a good brown. Yeah, pretty fish. It's <laughs> ah. a good one. I just got bit too. Huh? I just got bit. Another keeper. I just had a bite too. That's a good one. Keeper. I would take five of them. Yeah. Come here, you're doing. Oh yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You know what he bit like? Same way? Tick tick? Tap tap. Tap tap. Huh. That's a good one, man. Not bad for Kentucky Lake these days. <laughs> at all. Would love to have five of them. Heck yeah. Huh. Nice. I'm throwing one more. I'm gonna throw up here a couple He's times. I had my line tight in a while. <laughs> Man, they're healthy though. They're fat little suckers. Pick you up a trolling motor too while you're in there. 
And you couldn't find them in Cody anyway. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, was, I can't remember who I was fishing with not too long ago. He's got a Garmin because of the same thing. He went, he went to buy a Minn Kota and he couldn't find one anyway. So he just ended up buying a Garmin and he, he likes it a lot. Yeah. That wasn't his first choice. Well, that's what, when I ordered this boat, it came with package and that's what was on it. I had never tried for it. folks that's a wrap on the practice video thanks for checking it out give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated um caught a really nice small mouth in the morning and caught a few fish in between had a lot of little just peck peck bites i wouldn't quite pick it up keith caught um you know he he would have had a decent bag especially there towards the afternoon he caught three pretty pretty solid keepers so i'm i'm hoping he can repeat that tomorrow. He's fishing some isolated stuff. Um, so that's good for him. I think he's got a little bit of confidence. And for me tomorrow, um, I'm just gonna keep my head down. I won't really know what I'm doing until I talk to my boater. I imagine I'll just be throwing that shaky head around and just a little hope and pray and a little shaky shaky. I'll be throwing a Carolina rig around too. But that's it, um, Kentucky Lake, man. It's it's coming back. You know, fall on the Tennessee River is always tough. It's just it's just tough. But the lake has gotten a lot better in the last couple of years. The Asian carp, we did see a few Asian carp, but it's not bad. It's not nothing like it was several years ago. The shad, there's a lot of shad on the side scan. You're seeing little pods of shad swimming around. A lot of white bass, a lot of yellow bass. Just uh, a lot of life in the lake. So that's. That's a good sign. It's good to see that. Um, I mean, I think the thing that might hurt the fishing is we are starting to see a lot of bigger tournaments come there. You know, the Opens were there. Um, were the Opens there? I don't know, the Toyota Series was there. But anyway, a lot, of, a lot of bigger tournaments are starting to come back to Kentucky Lake. And that's one of the things that kind of hurt it, the tournament pressure years ago. Obviously, the loss of grass and the influx of Asian carp did not help but the tournament pressure the fish are easy to see it's a rock lake without that grass they have nowhere to hide and with the aventation or the inv the invention yeah the invention of live scope it's easy to see those fish they can't really hide so people pick on them um, I just uh, we just hope and pray that people do take care of the fish during the tournaments to keep this resource healthy I act like I live down there you know I'm from Missouri but it is a uh, two hours away from my house and I don't know I've, I've spent plenty of time in the boat so I feel like it is kind of near and dear to my heart and I, I sure hate I hated to see it go downhill over the last several years but she's back she's growing things are good that's all I got for you till next time <laughs>